Masking is black. What you looking at? Masking. Yeah, feels so good to be black. Welcome to episode 21 of the Black in Fashion podcast. Oh my God, we are 21 episodes in, and today is actually the first day that I am starting video. So I usually all audio. I was like, you know what, with 21, I'm going to introduce video. You inspire me. I want to go ahead and create me a little YouTube series. So let me introduce you guys to my guest for today. It is Robert, really appreciate you joining the show today. Let me just give you a little background on Robert, also known as the wealthy guy. He's a men's style expert, men's wear designer, and a published photographer. Robert has a YouTube series where he shares men's style grooming tips for today's dapper man. So, Robert, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you guys started being a stylist. Yeah, so firstly, thank you for having me. Of course. <laughs> Listen, it's hard to get me to come out to Brooklyn now. <laughs> <laughs> I live uptown too, though. Right, 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 <laughs> right. But uh, I was like, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be on there. I'm gonna support what you're doing. Thank you. And yeah, I came out, and it, it's like some festival going on, uh, but at the Bam. Oh, you know, okay. it's like have... street food and oh, okay. a whole so bunch going go on. So it was crazy. Because I'm already hungry. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so um, my name is Robert Pauly, um, men's style expert, custom clothier published photographer. I am a New York native, originally from the Bronx. Yes, yeah, uptown, yeah, yeah, yeah. uptown, baby. but I live in Harlem <laughs> now. Um, so just some background leading up to this, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, before this, I worked in finance. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I worked in finance for about 10 years. Nice. Uh, I worked at two, two of the biggest banks and um, I did a number of jobs. I lived in Hong Kong for three years, oh. um, doing doing Asian sales strategy. I've lived in China. I've lived in Brazil. And oh, one wow. day, I just woke up and was like, "Do up the deuces." Right. You, you um, didn't feel like it was your purpose anymore. Right. Okay. Right. Like since I was a kid, I always saw myself dressing up mm -hmm. and going to work to my corner office with my briefcase. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's kind of the path that I took. Okay. Um, and, you know, later on in my finance career, I just got to a point where I was just like, what am I, what is my purpose here? What am I doing? Mm -hmm. All right, people throughout my, my career at both banks, people always knew me as the guy with the nice suits. Right. And I was just like, no one's ever gonna know that I am doing all these things for these rich people that have way more money than me. <laughs> what is going to be my legacy in what? the world? Um, so you just had like an epiphany. I did. Okay. I did, and I had like, becoming a custom clothier was kind of by accident. Mm -hmm. Like it was, I saw, I wanted a coat you know, like the one that I make now, uh, a top coat with real fur. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be luxurious. Mm -hmm. And no matter where I looked, I couldn't find it, right? It was either something that was Fendi for $5,000. Of course. Right? <laughs> or Zara with faux fur for $200. I'm like, no, there has to be something in between. Yeah, absolutely. So you know like how they have those fur liquidation sales, different places you go in, you get your for 60% off, or yep. they claim is 60% off. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was I was coming from work one day, and I was like, oh, let me go in this place. Mm -hmm. So I went in, and I said, let me see if they have the coat that I'm looking for. So I spoke to the salesperson. He was like, no, we don't have anything like that. Why don't you try to make it yourself? And I was like, hmm, make it myself? But my mentality was, well, what do you mean make it myself? Like, right. I just want to buy it. Right. Um, so he actually gave me some information, and then I started to do research. And the first coat that I that I like got was a coat that I had already, and then I just put the fur, got the fur put on it. Gotcha. And started wearing it, and people started asking me, like, oh, where'd you get that coat from? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, you know, I just put the fur on myself. And then people started asking me if I could do it for them. Gotcha. And they started to pay me, and I'm like, wait a minute. This is a think, business. Yeah, this is a business. This is a business. I think I got something here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the day that I, like, woke up 
And my alarm clock went off, I hit the snooze. It went off again, I hit the snooze. All right, it went off again. I hit the snooze and that third time, I just sighed and I was like, today's the day. Today's the day to make a change. Yes, I'm not going back there. Mm -hmm. So I opened up my laptop, logged on to the company system, Mm -hmm. sent an email saying I'm not coming back. Mm. Yeah, your two weeks notice like that. Right, right. I will send you my corporate card, my Blackberry and my ID, but I'm not coming back. Um, and even that to me was. Oh, it wasn't even two weeks' notice. It was just like, no, 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 I'm no. Done. It was like, I'm done. Oh, I'll wow. mail you your stuff. I'm not coming back. Oh, wow. And that to me was like an act of defiance. Because you know, when you work in a corporate environment, everything is so structured and you must do it this way, mm-hmm. right? Everything has to be mm-hmm. in a way. I bet I've, I've left. You better than me because I just leave and I won't say nothing. And I've done <laughs> right. it to a few corporate fashion jobs. Right. I'm like, y'all on my damn nerve. Right. Right, I'm out. This ain't what I want to do. Goodbye. But right. I won't even say goodbye. So yeah, at least so, you did. <laughs> yeah, so I did. And, you know, they called me up and they were like, you know, why don't you just take some time off and think about it and come back and maybe find a new role? And I was like, no, Mm-mm. this is this is it. No, I'm done. Um, I'm I'm done, and 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 that that was it. And then the journey of the wealthy guy began, gotcha. um, and all the things that I'm doing now are all things that are me, mm-hmm. and have been a part of my life. People who've known me since I was a kid, they know. Mm-hmm. I like to wear, you know, I like to wear suits. I like to take pictures. Mm-hmm. You know, when I was a teenager, I wanted to be a model, right? I used to carry my pictures in my backpack. Yes, yeah, people for having you a portfolio <laughs> on deck at all times. All times. <laughs> Stay time. ready. Stay ready. <laughs> I feel right? that. So, so people always knew that about me. So all the things that I'm kind of doing now come very natural to me. And I'm like, this is what I am meant to do. Right. I feel that. So, I always like to do this little game Yes, yes, come this, on. This or that. <laughs> so, bow tie or tie? Ooh, tie, for sure. I love a good bow tie here or there, mm-hmm. but definitely necktie. Okay. Yeah. Duster or trench jacket? Ooh, yeah, no. that's a good one. No. Trench. <laughs> <laughs> um... Cufflinks or pocket square? Ooh, that's a good one. Ooh. <laughs> so, ooh. <sighs> definitely pocket square. You can have much more fun. Yep, definitely pocket square. Notch collar, shawl collar? Ooh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> definitely notch. Definitely okay. notch. <laughs> He's like, oh. <laughs> okay. Um, Double breasted, single breasted. Oh, listen, stop playing. <laughs> Double breasted all day. <laughs> all right. All right. Straight sleeve or two piece tailor sleeve? Oh. Straight sleeve. All right. All right. <laughs> I would. I know the answer next. I was gonna say button down to polos, but it's definitely button down. Sure. Definitely <laughs> button down. Definitely button down. Okay. Oh wait. Lace up or loafer? Oh, that's a good one. Because lately I've been wearing loafers, but I love a good lace up. Lace up. Lace up. Yep. Okay. Lace All right. up. All right, all right. I feel you. That was good. Very was dapper. Good. Good. <laughs> I used to work in suiting too. Right. Yeah, that was I good. worked for this company called the Tailory. Um, uh-huh. NYC and we did like custom suits there and then I first learned about suiting when I was living in Chicago I managed the men's section and we did suits and that's when I first started to learn and then I started to do like the alterations on them and stuff like that so I got I know a little bit about L- little suiting bit, little I know bit, yeah. a little bit here and there <laughs> so I know right, the right questions to ask okay so going into the second part so what would you say your biggest struggle was when you first started out like uh, venturing mm. into basically being an entrepreneur that's 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 a good question. I mean, my my biggest struggle was I didn't really know what to do because at that point, like I quit and I'm feeling it right, chest mm-hmm. puffed out. Then it's like, oh shoot, that last check coming on the thirty first. What am I gonna do to make money to you know to pay these bills? Mm-hmm. So you know. I was selling a coat, but you know now my coat costs between a thousand and two thousand. So you know people ain't giving you a thousand dollars every day, right? Right, especially when they don't know you. 
right. or know your brand. So it was just like, oh man, what am I, you know, how am I going to make money? Um, and, and at the time, you know, I started to photograph people. You know, I had a camera and it was just like, okay, this is something that can make money and I'm going to, you know, do this as a as a hustle. Right. Right. For now. I didn't know that it would turn into like what it is now, but it was like a starting place because I knew, okay, someone to pay a thousand dollars for something when they don't know the brand, right? It's not a Gucci or something like that. But, Which it, sh- it shouldn't be that way. Right. But. Uh, listen, that's a whole nother, you know. Um, but I was like, I could take a picture of somebody, you know, and they pay me and I can like get money that way. Okay. So you use um, photography like as like, you know, to get you over. Okay. Right, Makes right, sense. right. So it, it, it was difficult because it's just like my first clients were people that I knew. Mm-hmm. Um, which is awesome because you know people are always complaining that their friends don't support their businesses. Oh yeah, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, I and, know all about that. Yeah, and it's like I was selling an expensive product. Was you giving them a discount rate? At first, I was. Okay. And and that's where I was like going wrong too because mm-hmm. once I started to like look at what I was actually making, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not even making any money. Right off of this you know so then that's when i had to just everybody across the board you know you have to pay the regular price Mm -hmm. um so that was really difficult because you know like i said it it was like march so people weren't associating uh winter you know it was spring right so it's just like i'm trying to show this coat and no one's thinking they like why are you showing this coat it's it's, <laughs> it's not even you know it's not even cold um but with the photography business that was something that was able to run every day and my first year round business right. opposed to a coat where it might only be like winter fall right business. yeah so well, why my, don't you do a lighter fabric you ever thought about that no it was the the coat was my you know okay it's like this is this I know I'm like this is what I want to focus on and this is what I want to make pop. Mm-hmm. Um, and my first photography client was actually a neighbor. Oh, nice. Who knocked on my door, a white man, and he was like, "You don't know me, but here's my ID. Can I borrow your computer?" And I'm like, "Um, oh, he was no." So he was like, "Oh, yeah." So he, <laughs> he was, was like, "I'm really." He's like, "I'm really in a bind," you know. I need to borrow this computer. I need to fill out this paperwork. I just got a new job. And he was like, I have to find a headshot. And I was like, I could do it for you. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, really? I'm like, yeah, I, could, I have a camera. And he's like, how much? I said, 50 bucks. Mm-hmm. He's like, OK. So we went up to the roof. I took this man's picture. The editing was so bad. When I look back on it, I'm mm-hmm. like, ooh, it was terrible. But he loved it. Right. He loved it. He got it the job done. He loved it. His mama loved it. <laughs> he was going to put it up on Tinder to get some dates. He was. He really loved it. And after that, he like took me to the liquor store and bought me a bottle of Jack Daniels. Yes. So I actually made yes, like $80. Yeah. <laughs> for the company with the gentleman's check. You know? So I was like, oh, wow. Okay, I can do this. And what I've learned about what I'm doing now is in the time that we live in is you are what you say you are. You know? Absolutely. Like, you are what you say you are. And probably two months into my entrepreneur journey, I got a job teaching photography. I yes. only picked up a camera three months prior to that. And you got a job that's teaching it. You that's know? So that really taught me, one, you know, how to use a camera. Facts. Right? It really taught me about light. Um, and... and from there, it just kind of gave me more of the confidence to go forward. Um, and now the business is very different, okay. you know, and it still runs every week. It brings in money, but then now the coats also bring in money and the suits also bring in money. And mm-hmm. like my style enhancement service also brings in money. Right, so now you, you know? got that so, revenue coming from all different streams. Right, That's it's still up. hard though, don't give me, yeah. you know. So that goes, that rolls right into my right. next question. Is it hard to find and retain clients? It, ha- it 
So because of the price point of my products, yes, right? Because somebody, it's it's hard to get somebody to buy something for twenty or thirty dollars, right? Let alone something that's a thousand dollars. So the suits start at a thousand. They start at that's around. No, that's normal though. Yeah, and for, for a custom suit, that's normal, right? People. I, I don't know why you would think any other way, right. but that's normal. Yeah. And then how much is the coat? The coats start at about a thousand and right. it's wool cashmere, you know, it's yes. custom, right? The the client gets to pick the coat color, they get to pick the lining, they get to pick the type of fur and it goes up based on the type of fur. Gotcha. Is it made in the US? It is not. Okay, it is maybe. made in um China. In China. But okay. the fur piece of it, and that's why this fur band is getting on my my I, last I did the nerve. whole I did the text and stuff like that for them because I work a lot with I work a lot more like with leather and suede stuff, but the guy who does my furs right. and stuff like that, he texts me and he told me about it. I'm like, I already know I'm on top of it. You know, he's in the garment district too. Right. And it's like freaking killing me. He not only makes like fur coats and right. suede and leather, but he also sells it and he has when I tell you this man, I should take you there. Uh, it's on my garment nice. district, so I should take you there. Yeah. You'd go up there and you'd have a freaking field day. Right. That man got everything from lamb to rabbit. He made me a rabbit jacket for my right. birthday last year. Um, the year before, it, no, this past year, he gave me an Italian Tuscan fur vest that mm -hmm. he made custom. I right. did the pattern and stuff, and then I had him um, produce it for me. He does. He don't have minimum or anything. He can make one piece, or he can make 50 pieces. But right. it's a one, he has about three rooms just full of fur. <sighs> rabbit you yeah. name it like he's a russian guy real old school real real nice real cool guy does net 15 net 30 net 60 like he's i think you love him actually right. make sure i get you oh contact. yeah no anytime i go to my furrier i'm in there for like forever yeah because i'm just like oh this beautiful this beautiful. exactly i know and, feeling. but yeah but to get clients so so at this point i've been doing this for about two years mm -hmm. i know who my client is right when someone comes, someone DMs me on Instagram, mm -hmm. just by the way that they word their message, I know, you know. whether or not they're going to buy it. <laughs> Same. Yes. <laughs> I'm always just like, 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 hey, yeah, I, I'm trying to start a clothing line. Right. Right. Yeah. You you know whether or not the person is going right. to like, buy by I the know. way. Absolutely. By the yeah. way, they were like, hey, I'm looking in there. I have people who are very descriptive, like with their clothing lines or what they're trying to do, how many pieces they're trying to do. Those are the ones that I know are serious about. Yes. It. When you hit me up and tell me you want to start a clothing line, how much is it going to cost? Right. What? Yes. What? Yes. How many, like, how many styles or what type of clothing line? Where are you at in the process? Do you need fabric right. sourcing? Do you need grading? Do you need patterns done? Like, how many pieces do you want? It's like, it's just like, right. how much is it going to cost? How much? Yeah. Anytime someone. How much someone, you think it's gonna yeah. cost, sweetheart? Yeah. Like, go read a book. You I don't do know. I'm yeah, they don't know. I'm a book person. Me too. So I be like, I instead of just completely shutting them down, I'm like, it seems like you don't really know um, a lot about the clothing business. Right. These are my two recommendations that you read before you reach out to someone to get your line started. Right. Boom. Right. Straight like that. Oh yeah. Oh learn, yeah. Learn. Learn. I just you don't have to know everything, but I do think that if you want to get into the business, you gotta know something. Yes. You gotta have a little bit of knowledge on the craft or learning something about it, but you just can't jump in and like, oh yeah. I want to do this and I don't know shit and I can't even tell somebody what I want and that's the biggest issue like not right. being able to articulate yep. what you want have you had people come to you like I want a suit yes like, absolutely well what, what type of suit like, right. <laughs> what, what do you want <laughs> or I want a coat or or they'll they'll ask for things that they've never seen anywhere on my site or Instagram and I'm Cause like because I want you to custom make it for them Come on now. I didn't. I don't advertise that because I don't do that. Right. Yeah. Right. So I know who my client is, and you know that person when they come into the DM or they send me an email, mm -hmm. I know that they're gonna buy. Right. You know, but mm -hmm. that how much person? They're not buying nothing. <laughs> Facts. You know, my client goes to my site. They do their research. They see how much it is that mm -hmm. they want to. They look. What is the materials? Yep. What is the fur real? Is it da da da? And when they come to me, they say, I like this coat. What's the process and how do I pay? Done. Done deal. Done. So I have a segment called, like, what well, it's normally called, it's the look. <laughs> it's the look. And it's like somebody in the media that you felt like slayed this week. But for you, I put. If somebody in the media that you felt was very dapper. Ah, yes, <laughs> Is yes, that yes. A yes. I mean, if you want to use slave, but I'm like, who did you, like, just from, it could be a TV anybody. show, a media, something you saw on social media, anybody that you saw and why you liked the look so much. Yes, yes, yes. So I got, I got, um, 
One for you. It's actually a family. Really? Yes. A whole, who? What, the, which family? The Combs. Yes. Okay. okay. So okay. all of them, I saw an image um, of all of them in double-breasted suits. All the men? All the men. Ah. Diddy. Okay. King Kong. All of them. Okay. Quincy. Right, and, and the beauty of it to me was they were all fit very differently. Okay. So well, they all have different bodies. They all have different yeah, physiques, but the yeah. pants, some have really long, wide leg pants, mm -hmm. right? Some have a more tapered pant, mm -hmm. right? Some, the jackets were a little bigger. I don't know if that's because they didn't get it tailored, they just pulled it <laughs> off the rack. He's like, I don't but, know about that one. <laughs> but, <laughs> pulling for this shoe. Right. <laughs> but, you know, I instantly was drawn to it because when the spring started, I told my followers that double-breasted suits are really in. Mm -hmm. I've always loved a good double-breasted suit, but double-breasted suits are a trend this spring, right? And not just a really fitted, tapered double-breasted suit, one that's oversized. Okay. Right? Like okay. Dior has, you know, a one button double breasted suit and the pants are, are wide at the bottom. Okay. Right? So they all kind of had a different double breasted look. Gotcha. And I was like, I'm feeling that's, that. That's, I like that. That's the look. I like that. Okay. What would you say is the hardest part about breaking into the fashion industry as an African American? I put designer, stylist, yeah. Yeah, and, and things, photographer. Yeah. Like, Man, what's the biggest part about breaking into this industry and being black? I just think that the most difficult part is people go with what they know. <sighs> if they don't know you, if you don't have any credibility yet, right? If a celebrity hasn't worn your stuff or vouched for you or you've yeah. worked with a celebrity, you, it's like you're nothing. And I really, <clears throat> that's so true and I hate that. Like yeah. I hate the fact that like if I put out something dope, they looking for it to be have worn by someone else. Why can't right. you be the trendsetter? Why, Why can't, can't you, you be, be the, the showstopper? Yeah. But okay, yeah. I so get that. To me, that is the most difficult thing. People are just like, I don't know you. And when I first started, that's all people would tell me. Hmm. Oh, you need to work with a celebrity. Oh, you need to get your coat on a celebrity. I'm like, no, Have I you been don't. working with any? No. And, so, I was, and, that <clears> like, and when you had to give it to them for free? Right. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm anti-celebrity. <laughs> right, right. I'm not anti-celebrity, so, but it's like, I don't want to give you my hard work for free. Like, right. I get it. It's a marketing thing, and on my a, a, maybe like two podcasts ago, the guy who was on there, he said that he made he made T-shirts uh -huh. and gave them out for free. And I'm like, yeah, you can give a T-shirt out for right. free because you're not doing a lot. But it's like, I can't get no custom jumpsuit or no dress or nothing like that out for free. Like, I got to pay for all the materials along with the labor. Like, and I'm doing the labor myself. It might take me days on end. So it's like, I don't feel comfortable giving out for free. Right. But a T-shirt, hell yeah, I, mean, I can give out a T-shirt oh, for free. Oh, of course. That's nothing. That's marketing. Right. Whatever. Right. And, and if you don't have a a formal agreement in place with them that they're going to tag you or mention you because right mm -hmm. most people give give their stuff to celebrities for free they don't even get a mention don't say nothing. the only place you're gonna see the celebrity possibly in their stuff is on their page not Facts. the celebrities page yeah exactly i had a girl recently who she had wrote on she had put it all on on instagram right and was saying that like she made a free prom dress she made a free prom dress mm -hmm. someone but in exchange for getting posted getting several photos da, 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 and basically that this didn't happen and this her and this person had a verbal agreement i'm like and then she was asking for advice i'm like well, that's mistake number one right there. Right. Don't give no verbal agreement when it comes to marketing and advertising. You put in all the work, you bought all the materials, and right. you making this custom prom dress for advertising purposes and good photos. Like I told, I was told it was gonna be a professional photographer there, and this, this, that. You didn't get none of that none stuff of that right. Happened. And I feel bad for you, sis, yeah. because you just wasted a lot of your time and money. But as an entrepreneur, you gotta know, like you gotta know what's a like, what's a no no. Right. And if you've been in the business for a little minute, you know that I get everything right. Right. Everything. 
Right. Anything that I'm doing for free, well, well it depends. I'm do, I do a free prom dress every right. year as well um, yeah. for a, a girl, but I don't look for publicity or anything like that. I do it to give back. Right. And I don't do prom dresses no more, so that's just my little give back. It gives me a chance to make a gown every year just so I know I always got it. Right. <laughs> and right. just to give back because I usually do it for like somebody who's doing like a prom drive who has dresses yep. and then they do a raffle. Whoever wins the raffle, I make you a custom prom dress of your choice or whatever. Right. Fabric limitations. Right. Because you ain't getting no beating. Right. <laughs> Cause I gotta go buy it. You ain't getting no beating. Yeah, right. I, I might be leaning in with the sequence. But right, but no beating. <laughs> no beating, honey. Mm-hmm. You know how much them pieces cost? No, no, no. If I'm doing it for free, but you just you gotta dot all your eyes and you gotta cross all your t's, and that's the biggest piece of advice I can give out there yeah. when it comes to anything custom it, made. It is, yeah. And you know, my strategy is my my coat is affordable luxury mm. and people are like your coat is not affordable i'm like it's affordable for what you're getting absolutely you know mm-hmm. like like i said the first kind of coat that came close to what i was looking for was fendi mm. five thousand bucks Oof. you know so it is affordable luxury for the person who can afford but- that. So the per- the people that are telling you it's not affordable is not your customer. It's not your my client. friends is not your customer. They're, 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 Some of your critics is not your customer. It's not my client at all. I, uh, at all. So that kind of leads to my next question too. Do you feel that breaking into the fashion industry is needed, or do you feel like uh, creating your own success and your own opportunities and seeking validation from your community is enough for you? I guess it's, not, yeah. it's, it's like validation versus in, like industry validation versus like community validation. My approach was community validation first. I, my people, my people. <laughs> my people, my, my people. people. <laughs> you know, because I'm, you know, I just, like I said, I just started this two years ago. Mm. And it was just like, how do I market it? How do I get custom? How do I do everything? So mm-hmm. I just started, I spend, I always tell people, I spend at least half my time, if not more, studying and mm-hmm. researching and educating myself Absolutely. you know like across all things um so that i can you know understand and be knowledgeable and know what i'm talking about when mm-hmm. i'm when i'm saying something or when i'm sharing information with people and my approach it has it, it it's worked right it's it's really worked and yeah because I, I saw you have you have a big follow you have a huge following now yeah and you got you have a huge following on uh um, youtube and you're getting up there and yeah. it's all about and it's just like it seemed like it's very very focused to like people in your community yeah for sure. and even my facebook page because it's hard on uh your facebook business page to get any attention there i don't know what it is unless you pay for ads yeah uh, unless it, you pay for yeah, ads okay. but if you don't pay for ads I see, you know, brands bigger than mine and they have one to two likes per picture. But mine is like 30, you know, 25. And that's that's a lot. For Facebook. For Facebook yeah. <laughs> you know? Without ads. Without ads. ads yeah. yeah. So, you know, I'm fortunate in that, like, you know, I can relate to the people. And that's why, even though people see me and they see me all dressed up, I still am regular. I'm from the Bronx. Mm-hmm. I'm from New York. Stop playing. <laughs> Don't Stop play playing. Stop playing. What part of from? <laughs> from Soundview. Oh, nice. You okay. know? Yeah. So, I live in Riverdale. Yeah, so <laughs> fancy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You Bones know, don't go up there. I ain't from there, so I make sure right. I was in a good place. So shit, I don't know. Right. <laughs> um, so you know, my main thing with all that I'm doing on social media is that it needs to be, in layman's terms, it needs to feel like I am your like your friend, like you're having a conversation with a person, not a person that's untouchable. Right, and I think that people like that a lot more when they feel like they can engage with the person and they get to know the person and they get to see their journey. Right. And you never, it's crazy how many people you inspire and you don't know. Don't them. know, Like, like yeah. absolute strangers that you inspire and they're like, dang, really love when he's out there doing that. And I'm pretty sure you get those in your DMs yeah. and like in your messages. And it's like, damn, I'm really doing something that's helping somebody else, you yeah. know? I, I probably just taught somebody how to tie a tie that had no damn 
clue. Right. Yeah. All the time. No clue, or didn't have a father around, or something like that. You just like never know because you got people around because you got people that put their journey and their passion and stuff like that on Instagram, which I absolutely I'm one of those people. Right. Oh yeah, you have to. I had because I was put I put up something. It was a I would say it wasn't long ago, but and. It was a person from high school. It was just like, why you gotta always overly share? Why you all? And I, you gotta overly share. You gotta do this. You gotta do that. And I was just like, well, I never know who I'm inspiring by putting right. up my story. So that's what my page is about. Whether right. it be me talking something about fashion or me talking about self care or love or anything like that, I put up there and I'm overshare and I say what's on my mind right. and on my heart because I never know how I might be helping someone else. And for me, that's also my therapeutic way of letting it out oh, as well. Sure. You know, oh, and I sure. and I live to inspire. If you can inspire and you can teach someone, I just like you made it in the world. <laughs> like, oh, oh, for sure. If I can inspire and I can teach, that's all I ever want to do oh, is to yeah. be able to change somebody else's life. You for know? sure. Le- yes. It's. I think it's so important now to let people see that you're a real person. Right. You know, I'm a like, human being too. Oh, Just yeah. like you. And if I can do it, you can do it. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, like so back in you know early March like I lost my brother I lost my like one of my best friends mm-hmm. like practically in the same day wow you know and it was back just like I just kind of kept working just kept doing my my wealthy guy thing and I was like you know what I need to sit down before I break down on mm-hmm. the live or something but I wanted to share with the followers what I was going through in in my life and right. let them know hey I need to step back for, you know, some time. And when I come back, I'll be better than ever. But for now, I need time to grieve. I need time to make sense of um, all of this. And I was gone for like a week or so and my follower count like jumped. And there was so many, so many DMs and messages and just so, uh, so much love that I received. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and like my number is, you know, on on uh, the Instagram. So people were texting me and and it, it was just a, like random people, just like random people, random people were texting me, just offering, you know, support and saying that they were there for me. The only thing I don't like about having my, uh, you know, number on on Instagram is people be trying to slide down. <laughs> they t- <laughs> <laughs> slide your DMs. <laughs> You know, so they like, they text my phone like, hey, what's up? Like, yeah, and I'm like, who is this? You know, Um, and then after like, I'll either, you know, not respond or, you know, say this is for business purposes, you know? I I get that. I feel like you it's know? always somebody trying to slide in my DM. Somebody be trying to act like they trying to start a clothing line or right. trying to do something. Right. I'm like, yeah. And I can tell. Then it get to it get to being more about me, and I'm like, you know what? Yes. This yeah. ain't that. Right. I had to put a post up like, stay out my DM. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is this is not that. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I but, always, my answer is always, I'm flattered. Right. But I'm not interested. Right. Right. No, thank you. Yeah. So, so yeah. So I feel it is important for in 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 at first. I was kind of um, not necessarily opposed to being more open, but I just in, in my head I'm like, yeah, it's the wealthy guy. He gotta be this, and he gotta, <laughs> you know, drink his tea with his pinky out, you right. know. But I'm like, no, nah, that that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Like I need to just be me. I gotta be relatable yes, too. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. I need to just be me, mm-hmm. and you know, for me. You know, I I get clients, but the the messages that I love to see are people that are like, I love you, and one day I'm going to be able to buy something from you. Yes. Right? Those are the messages. <laughs> Make your little heart just right. jump out your chest. It's like, right. I really, really appreciate like I have Because I've had people like, I want to start a club line soon. And when I do, I'm going to fuck I'm, with you. I'm going to come, with, I'm gonna come to you. Thank you, and yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Now, I have another segment. It's called Fashion Stories. Yes. So you can. I want you to just talk about or tell a story where it was either a success or a disaster, like with a client, but that you learned something from the experience. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. So it could be a success or a desire, but something that you, like you, it, you, it really took you back and it would really put you in a different space when it comes to your business. I got one for you. Okay. So early on, you know, when I had first started, um, a guy that I know who throws parties, 
he had bought a coat for me mm-hmm. and he had started to introduce me to people who you know saw his coat and was like where'd you get it from and you know he told them you know i know this guy so i would like go to the parties and he'd be like oh this is the guy who makes the coats mm-hmm. so there's this one 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 uh client that i had he's like oh yeah you know i, I want a coat you know how much is it and so i tell him the price he's like nah bro you gotta come down on that like can i get it for da 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 don't do so, that right <laughs> But I did. You but did. I did. I did. This is very early okay, on. Very okay. early on. Okay. When I first started. So Yeah, I did that too. Yeah. Okay. And so I'm like, okay, fine. I'll make it for you at this price. Um, so, you know, I went over to, you know, his place and and usually I make people come to me. You know, so I, I And you did a house call. Yes. Home yeah. Location. Yes. All right, come yeah. on. Yeah. So I went to his place, you know, I took samples there you know i the whole thing showed him talked to him about the fur and the coats and and he picked the color of the coat that he wanted and, mm-hmm. and he picked the fur and um so i got the coat made and then i went to drop it off and he's like no nah, i thought this was gonna be you know the coat was gonna be darker after it's already so, finished after it was already already finished okay. but i agreed with him you know because the swatch that i showed him it it it, it didn't look the same so on that point it, it was it was like okay yes i get it okay um so i'm like okay well we can do you know one of two things it could be you know i can give you a refund or you know i can make you another coat but at either way at this point i knew i wasn't gonna make any money off okay. of the sale Mm-hmm. Um, so I had to make a whole new coat, you know, took it to him. He loved the coat. Um, but the next time he like reached out to me, it was like, oh, hey, I want to get another coat. Then he like started texting me pictures of like coats made in China, you know, that they were selling for significantly less than mine. And I'm like, bro, okay, look at this in. compared to, he's like, how is yours different from this? I'm like. Do we have enough time in the day for me to kind of go right. go through it? So anyway, you know, he's like, well, I want another code. I'm like, he's like, I want mink, da 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 da. I'm like, okay, that's gonna be pretty expensive given the price. Oh no, you need to give me that. And at that point, I was just like, nah. Like this is the price. If you want it, then you you know you get it. If not, then that's it. So he didn't get it. I was okay with that, but I learned very on, early on, don't negotiate on my price, Price-in. especially for yeah, one thing, yeah. right? Like if someone, I had a client that bought three coats from me, right? Of course, yes, I'm gonna give you something, give you, a, give you, you know, an incentive, right? But not for one, and not for one that, you know, like I'm not gonna really make any money off of, you know, so. So yeah, so lesson learned. I spent a lot in um, materials, in Ubers, going back and, and going and back and forth. And you wasn't on that price either, was you? Nope. Nope. So oh, I definitely was like in the hole on 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 that sale. So 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 after that, 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 that was it. You just want to get it out there, right. to push it out right. there. Right. And so I was like I thirsty, it. you I know. Like, but I'm like, nah. Mm-mm. Don't ever do I'd that. I'd rather. That. Get zero because you said no up front, mm-hmm. then get zero because I try to please you and you're like hard to please. That is probably the biggest thing I have to learn with doing right. this as well is trying to be a people pleaser. And when it's a no, it's a no. When people change things in the middle and you know, if you do too many alterations or something too, it messes it up. Right. And that's how I learned that the hard way. So right. That was my, like, just know when to say no and not to be a people pleaser. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. So um, now it's just like, you come to me, I only will do a house call if you're buying multiple, and I mean three mm-hmm. or more, so right? I like, got on location prices now. Like, yeah. That's how much I charge to come to you because that's my gas. That's my time. Right. That's me also, like, because usually people don't be in their house by themselves. That's for me distraction, too. That's, right. like, more of my time. <laughs> right. Yeah, like, like. Right. <laughs> I've had that. I'm like, if you 
yo, hurry up. They're right. cooking dinner. They're doing all right. the stuff. Right. They're doing all, all this stuff. What's right, what's right here? Right. right. Here. Yeah. And that's it. And that's you know? it. <laughs> and that's it. But yeah, that, and, and I also, uh, you know, if someone books an in-person appointment with me, they pay a hundred dollar, like, booking fee. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, because I had two experiences where wasted, your damn time. wasted my time <laughs> so bad and was so unapologetic about it. And they didn't care. And they didn't care. Didn't I was care. hot. <laughs> I was hot. And I said, now, never again. Now I draw the line now. Like you, and my consultation is only $50, but it's you get an hour of my time. Right. That's it. And I come to the door like, we got this. And if you like, that's that cut into your that's time. That's on like, you. I don't go yeah. over. Like, that's it. Like, done deal. I got more stuff to do. Like, right. So, question. Do you partner with other stylists, and is it difficult to like tell a story when it's like two different visions? So it's it's real. All, most of the things that I do is only it's just, it's, it, it's just me. Okay. Yeah. So you know. Cause I don't know why I was thinking like if a uh, like let's say like a celebrity or somebody they look a bit. I guess like more when they send their their personal stylist to work with you. Right. So it's a class. Yeah, so my so my whole my people, my people, my people thing mm -hmm. is really because I work with the people, mm -hmm. right? Like, so people who purchase a style enhancement service from me are people you're not going to know, okay. right? Mm -hmm. That want to enhance their style, you know, they want to learn about how to groom themselves better or something like that. Okay, so those going to go hand in hand. So the question, the next question is, how do you deal with men transitioning from like street clothing or like their other, I don't know, however they dress to a more dapper look because of maybe family influence, or like friends influence, or maybe even significant other? So how do you deal like with that transition? So <laughs> is it really hard to pull it out? I'm like, no, you look great, but they're not used to like looking in a certain way, like, grooming in a certain. Oh way. yeah, so uh, I get people that come to me. You know, that are used to wearing, you know, jeans and sneakers and stuff like that every day. And they want to get a suit or they want to get a coat. Mm -hmm. And when they do, it's like, you know, they're like, wow, like, I can't believe this is the way I look. But I started laughing when you started asking the question because... A lot of times, guys come with their wife exactly. or girlfriend. Like significant other gonna be like, you gonna change up your look. So like, you're being right. forced to do and it. And they are the ones that really guide what the man gets to get. Okay. You know? So it's mm -hmm. always so interesting when... Sometimes they don't say that they're bringing whoever. But mm -hmm. sometimes they will. And I'm like, okay, here we go. You are not gonna get what you want. You're gonna <laughs> get what she wants. <laughs> You know, and people DM me all the time like, oh, I want my man to look more, you know, more dapper. You know, what do I do? I remember this one lady. She's like, yeah, that is, you know, he was, you know, he worked in the government and now he, you know, got a, his own business and he just wears T-shirts and jeans. But I want him to look nice when we going out. Mm -hmm. So she like, I'm going to send you a picture of him. So she DMs me like the pictures. And she, I'm like, well, what do you want him to to look like? And she's like, I want him to dress more like you. I said, I'm sorry, I have to be honest with you. He's not, he not gonna do that. <laughs> He's not gonna do that. <laughs> well, it's the truth. Right. Like sis, uh, yeah. I, I understand what you're going for, and I'm flattered that you want him to look like me, but he ain't. Right. He ain't right. doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so yeah. So it's interesting, but the woman always guides the look. The look. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, with suiting, I feel like I wouldn't be able to. Like, I can, I feel like I can, I can somewhat dress a man. I prefer not to. I've had dress men in the past, like, but luckily now I attract men and I already know how to dress. So right, right, <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of. Now I'm attracting men who don't put their dog on clothes. Right, so and now I don't have to be like, uh, are you sure you want to wear that? Right. Like I know I got the, I have a, a nice mix of someone who they have to, they know how to wear their urban clothes and they know how to dress it up and have me imagine like me because I'm. All over the place with my style. Like I, I change it up, and thank God I've been able to find something. Right, right. Well, I you don't got to dress them. Mm -hmm. like, Ooh, who put that? Right. And where you get? Okay. Yeah. You ain't gonna be able to roll like that. Right. So let's talk about your YouTube channel. Uh, what can the people expect to learn and gain from subscribing? Yes. So my YouTube channel and in. in for a long time, I was like, should I, shouldn't I? Mm -hmm. But you know, I mean, you know this. It's like a lot of times when we don't do stuff that we want to do, it's because of fear that no one's going to 
Yeah, because yeah. it's the first. I'm like, this is the first skit yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no one's gonna no I one's hope, gonna I hope so. Yeah, hope no one's going to listen and watch Right. Science. Yeah, so on my on my channel, I kind of started the channel with so I used to do Facebook lives and Instagram lives mm -hmm. um, before I transitioned to having a YouTube channel and I would talk about, you know, uh, men's suiting, I would talk about accessories, I would talk about shoes. Um, all these things and I pull up my clothing rack, you know, <laughs> like or whatever it is I have my visuals there okay. and people people loved it and you know on Instagram You can't really uh, Put long long videos. Yeah, I think it's 10 minutes or less. Right? Yeah, yeah, on, on, on IGTV, IGTV. Yeah. So, you know, I will put a clip of something and, and I, I started to get asked the same questions all the time What do you use on your skin? What do you, how'd you dye yeah, your beard? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and by the way, your skin is looking nice. Okay, well, I got <laughs> you always love it. I'm like, girl, black on brand, black on beauty brand. Right. Um, moisturize. Right. Moisturize. Cleanse, hydrate, moisturize. Right. Boom. The <laughs> moisturize for sure right. is the key. I, I yes. That, you know what's crazy? Because I think people wash and cleanse their faces and then moisturize their face, they're missing the toner, the hydration in between. Yes. That's like that in between. You yes. put some rose water on your face, yes. some hydration toner because I don't think I started to glow until I threw that in the middle. Right. Like I always cleanse my face and I always moisturize my face. But I went to Afropunk. Right. And um, I was walking around looking at all the different vendors and stuff like that and they had a lot of beauty brands. Mm -hmm. And I came across one and she was showing me her products stuff like that. I'm like, let me get some. I've never had a hydration toner. Give some try. I got that. I've been glowing ever since. Right. <laughs> Right. Oh, oh it's so right, because I, I hugged my, my friend the other day, my little boo thing, and he was like, you got to get makeup off of my shoes. I was like, oh. Ain't <laughs> Right, right. I don't so know, they tell me like you don't. Right. Oh, it's so you, baby. Yeah. So <laughs> like, what the YouTube is is really longer form videos of Grooming. what people see on the Instagram. Yeah. Gotcha. Where I can really kind of go in detail and talk about these different things mm -hmm. um, that I talk about on um, Instagram, and then I even uh, you know I highlighted. The Beauty Cave, which is a black-owned salon that's like right down the street from me. I went in there, and and, and the video was on men's grooming. Okay. So I got a pedicure and a manicure, and then I interviewed the owner and one of the makeup artists and asked them. Oh, that? That's an yeah, well, one one eleven thin uh, first, okay. and I interviewed the owner and a makeup artist and asked them like, how important is it for your man to be? Groomed, have them right. nails, you know, them nails looking right and them, the the feet looking right and, and skin and all of that. And just to give a woman's perspective to my male followers, like, yes, the ladies want y'all to I look. Saw it. I saw that one actually. Yeah. I looked at it, I'm like, yes, come on. Yeah, yeah. The ladies want y'all looking, looking groomed. Oh, Take yeah. care of yourself. Right, look nice. Yeah, so, you know, I'm really looking to you know add much more content to it and um yeah just you, like take uh, it for further do you do like segments based on maybe like a viewer question or like comment or i'm gonna media? start yeah okay. because i okay. get so many Radio. questions okay. so many questions but yes yeah, yeah okay. i'm i'm definitely so going to like, you have like i mean oh you have like, well, you pick one every week or something yes like that, and then like you address them and stuff like that really like make them feel like in tune with yes like yeah cool. yeah so yeah so it's growing mm -hmm. you know it's 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 a uh, it's not an easy platform to crack, okay. you know. Like it's it's much more work than an Instagram to me. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause you have to do like the editing. Yes. Things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, how do you how do you promote it? Like you have to promote it via IG and Facebook like that for them to yes. go to the YouTube page. Yes. So does YouTube have like an actual like promotional tool for you to pop up when people are like searching on YouTube for stuff? Um. <sighs> So, so that goes all into like the SEO and where you rank and uh, all of those okay. things. But because of the following that I have, I can um, put my link like in my stories. Okay. And it's just a swipe up and it and takes them directly to my YouTube. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that is the benefit of, um, of, of, of that. But yeah, people subscribe, people comment, um, you know, there, there hasn't been any problems on there. 
Because I know some, you know, like depending on, you know, what platform you on, you have some trolls coming in talking junk, you yeah, know? Cool. <laughs> okay, you well, Instagram bullies. oh yeah, yeah, no. So there's once in a while somebody will come like, oh, well, you know, I remember one guy was like, well, my bow ties, you know, I, I always, you know, tie my own bow ties. And I'm like, bruh. Do you really think that I would be up here with a clip-on bow tie? You know, like, why y'all always have to add y'all, you know, like, yeah. two cents. Let me be great on my right. platform. Right. You go to yours and you make your video. And have your best life. Right. Leave me alone. Right. So why do you feel like it's, why do you feel it's so important to educate, inspire, and mentor, like, young men? And what's, like, the biggest piece of advice you can get, like, that's a good question. It's important because I am a benefactor of that. Okay. If there weren't people in my life that showed me something outside of my neighborhood, that showed me that I could travel, that showed me that I could wear a suit and be respected instead of made fun of, Right? Mm -hmm. um, if there weren't those people who saw something in me and gave me opportunities, I wouldn't be who I am today. True. So it's important for me to give back. You know, I taught a class at, uh, at the high school of economics and finance for like, five years off and on on turning a hobby into a business. And this was even before like I had my own business. You know, like it, it was a, it's a program where they get professionals to come in and teach all sorts of stuff. Oh, nice. You know, and you go, it's over eight weeks and you go an hour, you know, a week over the eight weeks and you do a, a topic. Mm -hmm. But there, like I've always been involved with, you know, community centers and things like that. Like I did career day at a school in Brooklyn two weeks ago, and now it was far, I was in Brownsville. Oh baby. Yeah. That's a nice little commute from Harlem. But <laughs> even if it's one person who looks at you and says, I can do it because you look like me, you come from where I come from, you have similar circumstances, there's possibly hope for me. I'm Absolutely. not weird. I am, I, I'm, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. So the advice that I would give to, you know, to young people is be you, you and know? And be okay with being and, you. And be okay with being you. Yeah, that's the hardest thing I think for high school is because of so much peer pressure, yes. so many things around. It's so hard to want to be you and be okay with being you without somebody fucking yes. with you. Right, right. <laughs> and it's just like it's you almost gotta have um, thick skin. You do. You gotta have thick, but not everyone has that. But it's like, and I know it's easier said than done. But it's like you have to get to a point where you establish it and it just roll off your back. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. But I think it's a. A ongoing process mm -hmm. because even still yeah. me I'm like still struggle with that yeah like for as much as I am myself it's still like oh well can I really be too all, all the way myself or right. you know do I gotta pull back yeah I still feel that that way in my job yeah you know and I feel like that I try myself to be myself in my interview. Right. The way I talk at work and the way I speak in my interview is exactly the same. Right. So you're going to take me from me or you're not going to take me at all. Right. You know, so I think a, you know, a couple of jobs back, I definitely was a conformer. Like, I gave them what they wanted to uh, see and feel and blah, blah, blah. But like this past job, I went there with my natural hair. I didn't go there with my weave. Right. I went there with my natural hair. I spoke the way I spoke and I talked about me. You know, right. I talked about you know, that I had a podcast. I talked about me having, like, all the different ventures that I was doing on my own. Right. Like, that I wanted to work for their company for this, 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 this and this reason. So, because I hate getting somewhere and they're like, well, you don't really want to be here. You really want to do this. No, I want to do both. Right. I want to do both. And there's nothing wrong with me wanting to do both because I have an entrepreneurial spirit. So, right. if I can take your company to the next level and take my company to the next level at the same time, that's a win-win for me. Right. You know? 
Right. I'm doing it with a startup and I'm doing it with something that's established. That's something that's one of my goals. Right. So I don't yeah. perform and no for more. them too. Yeah. I'm like, I don't it's perform no more. Too. Because yeah. I, at work, I, be, I tell somebody quick, fast, and hurry, girl, you was full of shit. Don't play with me. <laughs> <laughs> right. I didn't have to do it at work like right. a million times. But this is the first time I got blessed. I have black boss. First time ever in the fashion industry that my boss is black. Right. And I love it. And But she's been gone for a couple months because she's a maternity lead. And still, I've just been putting people in their place left and right. And I'm just like, don't play with me. I'm not the one. Exactly. <laughs> and um, one of the girls recently mentioned to me, she said something about me being, my personality might be too much for someone, which right. I feel like it almost shook my confidence up a little bit. Right. And then I was just like, I had to just check her in that moment. I said, don't do that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like the, and the hand went up, finger went up. I said, "Oh, don't do that," because my personality has nothing to do with anybody in here. If it's a grown ass woman in here that can't stand my personality, she in the wrong damn business. Right. Okay. Right. And I almost was being like, "Cause I was taken back at first. I was right. like, "No, I'm me, and I'm okay with being me." And I got hired because I was myself. Right. And that's that. And I'm your boss. Why are you talking to me? Right. No, everything you do runs to me. Like I said. Go ahead and just have a seat, darling. Right. <laughs> I ain't got right. time. <laughs> so what are your long-term goals, and where do you plan on taking your business, like, say, in the next 10 years? Listen, I've, I've not even really thought out that far. Five you, years. Five years. <laughs> years. Two years. It's just, it's, what, what's really been interesting about this journey is that things have come to me that I would have never thought mm -hmm. would have come on, on this journey. Just from living your purpose. Yes. Yep. Yes, in my first year of, you know, in, in my first year of business, you know, as a photographer, as well as, you know, as someone who, you know, was making these coats, I photographed at New York Fashion Week. Mm -hmm. You know, my work has been on BET.com, it's been yes. on Black Girls Rock, it's been in Out.com. Like, I. Wait, was your coat at my birthday party? Yep. <laughs> Yes, it yeah, was. Yes, so many compliments on that right, coat. Right, I right. Talk. I was just thinking about the structure of that coat as you were talking. I'm like, that's that coat. Yeah, yeah. My cousin wanted that coat. Yeah. My stepdaddy wanted right. that coat. <laughs> My uncle wanted that right. coat. They were right. like, uh, who, who, who wanted that Let's coat? Let's just go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I thought so. So I'm like, I feel like that. I thought it was the same yeah. coat. Yeah, you got you got a lot of compliments that day. So yeah, like where you get that coat from? I'm yeah, like, go ahead and ask them. <laughs> yeah, so you know, my my coat has been in a, a, a movie. I got to go to the premiere. Like, wait, what movie? It, uh, it's called Asian Mob. Asian Mob. Right. So okay. I had a friend who who was in the movie, and the director mm -hmm. needed to finish some scenes and needed a coat like mine, and he told the director about me, and I got to like go on the set and no. yeah and then go to the premiere and like see my name in the credits right it's, it's costume design is that what it's you, yeah okay. like wardrobe, wardrobe. And i was like oh, oh wow like i would have never mm -hmm. thought this and even now like i'm in a documentary that's coming up soon nice. um just all of these things have been you got this called the women's huh you got this called the women's that was my next thing this year because since i started women Where's our where's the coat for right, us? We like wool cashmere too. <laughs> I like wool cashmere. Right. I like me a silk lining. Right. And I like me a fur collar. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Like, it's all the elements that are one. Right. And so we do like that oversized look too. I wonder. I yes. Ne I never. I feel like I need to just come put on. You, yeah. You, I need to come put on the blue one that you got already. Right. <laughs> But I need, I, yeah, I need to come put that on and just see how that feels on me because I like the oversized. Look right. <laughs> but that's the thing. So it's like. With women's, it for me, it has to feel right, right? Because the men's, I can sell it like mm -hmm. I get up on that Instagram and start talking about For the women's, I have to be able to feel as confident about it. And I have the idea of what a couple of th ways that I want to go with it, mm -hmm. but it got to be right. I it got to be right. Yeah. You I feel know? You. So. Remember, I feel like I got a lot of men's comments too. Like, oh, you make men's clothes. And I'm like, I ain't there yet. Yeah. I'm not in that place. So I know it has to be an emotional attachment yes. to it. You got to feel yes. confident about it. Like, you have to be able to sell it, you know, because right. it's your brand, you right. know? And you have to be delivered on it. Like, you know what? For the women, I'm going to do this instead. Yes. So I know. Yes. So. Emotional attachment. Exactly. <laughs> so for the next years, I just kind of see the wealthy guy growing, mm -hmm. you know, as a brand. Like, I want to get on. TV, like I want to do style segments. I want to do all these things. I can see that. Yeah, I can see you being so, on the news. Yeah, listen. I can. I can, that see, is I can my, so that's see you being on the news <laughs> and 
see you doing different segments, I actually could see that in, yeah. your, in your near future. Right. I'm going to just so, go ahead and speak that into you. existence for you. Like, that's coming within... I would say this year. Yeah, it's coming this and year. When the fall come, you're going to be, whether you on the Bronx News, Brooklyn right. News, it's gonna be the on the News, news you're going to be on there giving somebody yeah. a segment for oh, yeah. sure. I can so, see that already. So definitely that is what I see in the future as well as just really growing the brand. Like mm -hmm. It is my goal to share with the world what I'm, what I'm doing and mm -hmm. what I have to, to, to offer. Um, and you leave have my so legacy. Much to bring to this world. Yeah, mm -hmm. and leave my legacy. Like, long after I'm gone, the images that I've like taken of people will be around. The coats, the the all the videos, all of this stuff will mm -hmm. be here. And then it'll inspire somebody. Yes, yes. I don't know. I don't know how long I'm gonna keep bleaching this beard though. <laughs> but Is that how you do it? <laughs> it don't matter. It right. Don't matter. Um, unless grown. I find a. Um, Less, uh, what, what, what am I less trying to ammonia? say? Less ammonia? Yes. Okay. A, a less chemical based way to. You know, do the, it. it's, you know, these beauty brands out there coming out with all type of stuff. Yes. So I feel like so it's I'm come, like, that's coming. Please <laughs> come yeah. out with something that I can like change the color of it and it not be like. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Yes. I know. I feel like it's coming because when I tell you, like, just like how those uh, natural hair care products popped up out of everywhere and they was everywhere, same way with colors because you need natural colors and stuff like that and all these, like, chemical free things. So right. that's coming. I can see that too in the future. Yeah, yes. <laughs> For sure. All right. So, last segment is fashion inspo segment. So it's any exhibits or events or readings or like anything current um, that you want to suggest that people like take a look at. That is a good question. Yeah, I tried. That, that is. is <laughs> <laughs> I try, you know. And that yeah, is anything a you feel like someone can read that question. could question. Anything. Yeah, it, it readings, events, so, ten exhibits, or even somebody like your current. If you have like a current muse. You think somebody should follow a certain person? And you're like, this is my muse right now. I'm feeling everything they're doing. You know, like so, that. so for me, um, a book that I always suggest to people and that I always kind of refer to because it talks about clothing, but it also talks about lifestyle. Is the nice. biggest black book ever. It's called the biggest black. Let me make biggest, sure I put that in yes. the show notes. So Esquire, the biggest black book the ever. The biggest black book ever. So mm -hmm. if you are male or female, wanting to understand dressing dapper better, mm -hmm. um, and the things that get you to a look like this. Mm -hmm. It's a book to read. But it talks about everything, how to treat women. Mm, yes. yes. <laughs> that would be in the show notes right. for sure. <laughs> how to treat women, right? Mm -hmm. Like it is it's an it's an awesome, timeless book. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I I gave one away recently, uh, in, in like a giveaway uh -huh. um, and I would do it again because it's a book that I refer to all the time and I just think it's, it's just a great a great book to have. Nice, I like that. All right, cool. Well guys, that's it for today. Thank you for tuning in to the Black and Fashion Podcast. Wait, before I close out, I need to know what, um, what three pieces every man needs in his summer and spring wardrobe Ooh. and then we can close out so i need those three pieces that everybody need in their summer spring wardrobe and two to three retailers where they can get it from or <laughs> <of course you. laughs> that's a good if one they that's can't good one. um get it, if they can't afford you i need two to three right. other options <laughs> okay so definitely first key essential piece to a spring summer wardrobe is sunglasses Yes. Okay. Sunglasses, <laughs> right? So sunglasses in the classic Wayfarer, Ray-Ban style cannot go wrong. Okay. But, you know, with sunglasses, it, it all depends on the shape of your head, right? In terms of what looks... <laughs> I love an aviator, but I, I have an oval head. I, mean, I got you an know? aviator. You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just like, 
You have to know what works for the shape of your face. But okay. a, 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 a Wayfarer, you cannot go wrong. This is a timeless style that will probably never go out of style, mm -hmm. as well as an aviator. Aviators will probably never go out of it's style. Sad. I don't right? see and, and, and it doesn't have to be a really expensive pair, right? right? Like, it can be a relatively inexpensive pair. I love, you know, Nordstrom Rack. Mm -hmm. Right, I love a Century Twenty One. Same, you know. I love, and there's so many brands that have been, you know, because you know, as soon as you say something and you close to your phone, then you see an ad for it. Yeah, I know. You know, it's called Big Data. Learned yeah. that in my master's program. Yeah, <laughs> yes. They record. And they they take exactly. everything. Exactly, and then the boom. Next thing you yeah. see it, and and what's really big right now is is our you know frames and lenses with blue light. Right. Blockers. Gotcha. You know, so I have a, a a brand actually sent me a couple pairs. I ain't gonna mention them because they ain't pay. <laughs> but... <laughs> That's when you miss your shameless plug. Right, plug. right, right. So, um, so sunglasses is number one. Sunglasses what's, is number one. What's number two? Number two, I would definitely say is a um, a simple T, right? Okay. So a. Um, for me, it's like a, a fitted tee, right? In mm -hmm. heather gray and black and in white. Heather gray, black and white. Oh. Right? Nice. Heather, gray, heather gray, black and white. And I talked about, you know, a few posts ago about men wearing heather gray undershirts under their white dress shirts so that it is invisible. You don't see, you wear white undershirt with a white dress shirt, you're going to see it. Right. With a Heather Gray. You like, do you like Uniqlo's you, shirts? I was just, you read my mind. I was just <laughs> about to say, Uniqlo, favorite, favorite place. For the basics. So, for the basics. Okay. Favorite place. So, sunglasses, basic tee, mm -hmm. and then the third thing is a simple pair of sneakers. Okay. Right? Something that is not, uh, Big and bulky, something that is uh, chic and narrow in shape. Like a Converse? Like a Converse. Okay. Right? Uh, like a, a Stan Smith Adida. Yeah. You know? Okay. Something like that. Okay. Like a Like a Puma, something like that. Um, and then the bonus, the bonus, mm -hmm. no show socks. Yeah. No show socks. I like that. Yeah, no I show like socks. That. All right, guys, make sure you take note of that. You need sunglasses, you need a basic t-shirt, you need a sleek sneaker, yes. and no show socks. No okay? show socks. <laughs> I will repeat that over and over in the show notes, just so y'all make sure y'all got that down. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you so much, oh, Robert, for so coming. Much for, for sure. It's all, y'all know what I say. Stay black. Peace out. Yeah, right now. <laughs>